Welcome to Drive 615. Let's go for a drive. Here it is, the 2023 Mercedes-Benz AMG EQE sedan. This is essentially the electric version of the Mercedes E-Class, and I've had this for the past week where I've been thoroughly testing it inside and out. As always on Drive 615, we'll take a look at the exterior, the interior, and then we'll go out and take it for a drive. The exterior color on this vehicle is Starling Blue Metallic. It's a really unique color. Right now, the sun's kind of setting. It's got a real nice, deep hue to it. When it's out in the direct sunlight though, like early in the morning or midday, it's got a little bit of sparkle to the paint. As far as the MSRP goes, as tested, this is $111,340. This does have the exclusive package on it. Let's go ahead and take a closer look up front. You'll notice there's very minimal front openings on this EQE. The most noticeable will be right here with this large black panel that spans the width here in between the headlamps. Smooth, gloss black with these vertical AMG bars finished off in chrome. It's kind of got a 3D design element, but it's completely solid. There's no airflow through here because this is an electric vehicle. There's no engine up here that needs to be cooled down, but this essentially kind of styled after that AMG Panamera style front grille. And I like the fact that they kind of put a unique spin on the AMG elements when moving to electric. The center of the panel is adorned by the Mercedes three point star logo with a camera embedded here at the bottom. As we work our way down, you'll see we've got a deep front apron with an air dam and a splitter here in this A-wing design. Again, if you're gonna get this, go ahead and get the night package. That's gonna black out all the chrome, $750 option, but it's well worth the money. I think it gives it a very menacing look, yet still luxurious and classy when you get it done from the factory. So that'll black out again. A lot of these chrome accents as we work our way up, we've got these digital light headlamps, LED, absolutely beautiful when you look at them up close. A lot of details on these nice luxurious cars can go overlooked if you just look at it from 10, 15 foot back. You actually got to get up and really appreciate all the little intricate designs and cutouts and edging and just really makes for, for a beautiful uh, look. And also it's functional too. It does some little designs and is real crisp and clean when you're out driving at night. Front hood is very, very smooth. No body lines through here at all. Just this one that hugs up through here as well as the one down here. You're not gonna need those typical dome pumps here like you have on the AMG because there's no engine underneath here, right? It's just a battery powered car. So they kind of had to play around with it but I still think they did a nice job of keeping those AMG roots in the styling. Let's go ahead and take a look at the profile. This vehicle has what Mercedes-Benz calls the one bow design. When you look at it from the profile and even from the front, it's got a very aerodynamic flow to the vehicle. I'm sure if you put this thing in a wind tunnel, it would, it would perform incredibly because it's just so long and lean and just very smooth. And I, it's got a, you know, a unique shape. It takes a while to warm up to it. First, I didn't love it from the front. Now I'm starting to like the front of it. I still am not sold on it from the side. This rear spoiler definitely helps kind of lean out the back of the vehicle so it doesn't taper off. But I'm sure I'll eventually just take a little time and I'll adapt to it and become, you know, start to like it. But let's go ahead and take a look through some of the features here. If it did have the night package, all this chrome would be blacked out. EQE up on the door. EQ stands for emotion and intelligence. That's kind of Mercedes-Benz uh, electric movement. We've got the Formatic Plus badge on this side. Now on the driver's side, when the vehicle is unlocked, you can push in here and that'll open up and allow you to put in your windshield wiper fluid. On the other side, there's the Formatic Plus badge, but nowhere that you can press in. Through here, you've got flush door handles, which again contributes to the aerodynamic nature of the vehicle. Flared out side sills through here. As far as the wheels go, we're sitting on 20 inch twin five spoke AMG wheels all the way around. However, if I was gonna get this, I would absolutely get the 21 inch Y-spoke wheels. Those look incredible in my opinion, but these don't look bad. I just wish that this little bit here where it's kind of like the multi-spoke design continued in further and then I would you know, think it looks incredible. And that's kind of what the 21 inch Y-spoke design does. So that's why I would opt over those wheels over these. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rear. Coming standard on the AMG, we've got this rear lip spoiler. It's a lot more prominent than that on the base EQE. We've also got this unique EQ Helix signature design light on the rear. Spans the whole width of the back of this vehicle. And 
gives it a really lasting impact for those driving behind you. You've got the AMG badging on the left, EQE on the far right. So we work our way down through here. I like this little bit of detail, not functional, but again, it kind of breaks up some of the smoothness and gives it those more AMG type styling dynamics. And I love the look of this diffuser. You got three of these vertical slats on each side, kind of integrated in. I like how this is all gloss black. As far as rear trunk space goes, you'll push in here on that back emblem. You got a decent amount. Again, this is kind of a long and lean vehicle. You can fold down the rear seats there by pressing these buttons, giving you full access to the rear of the vehicle. Typical storage on either side. And down through here, you've got your storage for you know, tire changing accessories, air pump, whatever you may need. Before we jump into the interior, let me show you the charging port here. You pop that open, it's on the passenger side. This shows the charge levels, this will change different colors. You can plug in here and then pull that out if you've got a different type of plug. And that's how you can release the charge there and they got some little diagrams there for you. If we walk around, to the driver's side is very interesting on these doors. They are frameless glass on both sides which leaves you this massive b pillar here with nothing on it so it's just really interesting when you look at it and you shut this here this is all just nothing and there's nothing connecting it it's just kind of flushed right up against the edge so very interesting design there mercedes-benz etched on the inner part of the door these go in flush when the vehicle is locked go ahead and step inside amg illuminated there on the door sill, AMG on the floor mat, and AMG pedals as well. Obviously this is the AMG variant. Let's go ahead and sit inside. As always, I won't touch on every single detail of this vehicle, but I'll touch on the highlights of what I like and don't like. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Foot on the brake, push to start. And as you hear there, it kind of gives you that little wake up sound and basically kind of lets you know the, the car's on. Otherwise, you wouldn't know. There's no sound when the vehicle is, is idling. If you want to change the sound dynamics here, that'll make it sound different when you're driving, but as far as idling, completely silent as you can hear there. So it kind of needs that little animation or a little noise to kind of let you know the vehicle's on. Let me show you this real fast in this 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. You'll see the zero to 60 time is 3.67. That is a lot slower than what I talk about later in the review, and that's because I'm on 41% battery, so that definitely does have an impact on the speed of this vehicle. This steering wheel looks great, just like on a regular AMG. You got the different mode selections here where you can change between them by, by turning this dial. And as you can hear there, when I switch from Sport to Sport Plus, it makes an animation, kind of a noise sound to let you know that the sound is on max. You can change between some different settings by pushing these buttons here and then turn that sequence on or off by pressing the buttons on the outer side. All finger touch through here as far as turning up the volume and setting the cruise control and whatnot. I do like the diamond knurling design through here. Got the Burmester sound system, speakers here, and on the outer bits as well. Take a look at this interior though. Absolutely gorgeous. This is Neva Gray, and we got the Biscay Blue AMG Napa Leather. And then we've got this Natural Grain Anthracite Linden Wood. That when you feel it, it feels incredible. This is not perfectly smooth. If you run your finger over it, it's got kind of like little ridges. And it's really, really cool. Massive touchscreen there in the center per usual. This is a 12.8 inch. MBUX multimedia system with the OLED portrait display. I love it, but check it out. You're going to kind of get fingerprints on here, so maybe keep a microfiber towel or something in the car to where you can wipe it. This black through here is beautiful as well, but prone to some fingerprints as well, potentially. So if we look down through here, you got the cup holders. You, this is where you put the key fob. You got your wireless charging up in here. Now, with this front cup holder there you can kind of turn this off to the side if you want then it's easier to get your phone in but with this out if you had a drink in here it'd be kind of tough to get your phone in there but uh it's something easily you can work around certainly press there on the amg you can see all the different setting this is identical just to a regular amg except we are in an ev now this is the only difference there when you press that that's going to show you 
your charging status again we're on 41 percent. that's 98 miles it'll show the range and the consumption so this is the big difference there that button is going to be specifically for this vehicle because this is an electric vehicle now i do not like this this is the panamera style sunshade and it lets light through now not much but it still is not like a complete blackout you slide your finger there to open it up and it's cool because it cinches to the middle so that back part back there is open as well as this but for someone who doesn't like being in the sun very often i wish it was more of a solid blackout shade let's take a look back here in the rear real fast the same continuation of the two-tone love that take a look down there got a little vent in that rear compartment there underneath and then in here you've got your slot for your phone push it again two cup holders pretty simple in the back but i do like these seats take a look at that look at how high up the headrest goes almost all the way to the roof. One unique thing is since this vehicle has no transmission tunnel, you got a lot of extra storage space down here. It's got this little strap here. I guess this could be if you wanted to put like a bottle or, or strap something in. Not 100% positive, but you could definitely store like a purse or phone keys, anything you want down here. Now it could kind of slide around a little bit. So maybe something larger, again, like maybe a big water bottle or purse would be a good spot for this. But it is interesting that you get all this free underside space you can control and customize what's up in this digital cluster there same as on the AFG regular models look how beautiful these vents are kind of like a turbine like design and of course you've got the crazy ambient lighting where you can change colors as quick as you can say the word color absolutely love it if you're changing the temperature check this out It'll pulsate through when you're turning the temperature up or down in red or blue. Awesome. Let's go ahead and take it for a drive. Behind the wheel and on the road, and normally at this point in the review, I would say, what are we working with underneath the hood? In the case of this, is an electric vehicle, so there's nothing up there. And actually, you can't even open the hood. I don't think the average consumer can actually do that. You have to take it to a specialist or take it to a dealer, and then they can do something special to open it up and I guess underneath there is where they can service some of the parts if needed but we're sitting on top of a battery and two dual AMG electric motors it's kind of like a skateboard type design basically this big flat battery four wheels on either side and then the, the you know uh, where the I guess axles would go or it's where the motor is in this vehicle and it's a fast car we got 617 horsepower and 701 pound foot of torque and when you do the race mode, it gives you a boost and that puts you up to 677 horsepower and 738 pound foot of torque for a brief little period when you're doing that race start. And that gives you a zero to 60 time of 3.2 seconds. I gotta say that must be a conservative uh, time estimate because that feels way quicker than 3.2. It's just incredibly fast and it's just amazing what a 90 kilowatt battery can do. We got a 225 mile range on this vehicle. And as far as the performance goes, the torque curve is a lot higher. The plateau on that is much higher. The, one of the big things on electric vehicles is they're real quick off the line. You floor it and you get that immediate speed, but then that power just dies off real quick. Great thing about this AMG EQE is it stays on for a, quite a while. I mean, it's just really, really smooth. And the fun thing about it is that at basically all gears, you can punch it and you get a very similar, you know, instant speed, instant torque. And it's just, yeah, that's the coolest thing about electric vehicles, I think, is just how that torque is basically on demand. You're ready to rock. And I absolutely, you know, love driving it. Now, as far as the paddle shifts goes and the steering wheel unit, this is really set up to be like an AMG. I mean, it, it is an AMG, but it's electric. But I still feel like I'm in an AMG. That's the cool thing about it is sometimes you get in these electric vehicles and, and, it, and it's just totally different and you can just tell that you're in an EV. In this case, they carried over real seamlessly all of the AMG dynamics. So I got the dynamic selection here. I'm driving in comfort right now, but with just the flip of, you know, two little twists, I'm in Sport Plus. Cool thing about this is it does have the AMG sound dynamics. So right now it's maxed out. And if you accelerate, 
you can kind of hear like you got some engine noise. Now it's not your typical V8 muscle car growl, but it definitely is some kind of you know humming and, and whirring that kind of gives you a barometer of your speed and just lets you know that you're moving. EVs are kind of sneaky like that where you can get real fast and, and real high up in the speed and not even realize you're going that fast. We were on the interstate earlier and I asked my girlfriend how fast she thought we were going. She said like, I don't know, probably 70. I was going like 93 and not even intentionally speeding, but I didn't have that sound on. I was just kind of whispering through, cutting through traffic and not even realizing that I was going that fast. So that's a very unique thing about that. And it, I do like the having the sound. It doesn't feel artificial. Obviously it is artificial piping through, but it doesn't feel like gimmicky or cheesy. It feels very natural. You do have paddle shifters on the steering wheel. It says up and it says down. That is not for going through gears. That is going for the uh, recuperation, regenerative braking, essentially the one pedal drive. So at lower speeds, it's real noticeable when you downshift. Even then, actually I was going 60 and I did strong recuperation and it feels like a gust of wind just comes towards the car or even like you're kind of driving in like quicksand or mud. It just really hits you quick and that's gonna be regening, helping with the battery. Now if I shift up, I go into normal recoup, shift up again, no recuperation, and then shift again, it goes into intelligent recuperation. So if you wanted to drive this thing like a regular car, you really could. You can kind of paddle shift and as you downshift it you know applies more resistance more recuperation more regeneration and it feels like it's kind of downshifting the car for you so that's super cool feature there as far as visibility goes it's really nice with without having the transmission tunnel of an ice vehicle that can really kind of rearrange the vehicle in a unique way it gives you a lot of different uh space so to the front windshield's really 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 far away i can barely touch it so that gives you a real nice wide expansive front windshield those a pillars are just kind of right out on the corner now if i'm looking out to the left this b pillar is right in my blind spot granted my seat is kind of far back because i'm six five uh so that's in my blind spot out the rear glass with the way how this panoramic roof slopes back and they have that third support there for the for the body it's real thin you know looking out the back of that back glass but you can still see cars and this car has so many different safety features and cameras and sensors that you know you're protected from all angles but if you you know just want to physically look out uh while you're driving it's a little bit tighter than normal but it's been a blast driving this car it's just so comfortable you know when you're driving just regular around town you got the amg ride control which basically gives you the four wheel multi-link adaptive air suspension specifically for this EQE. And that is basically at you know almost 10,000 times per minute, I believe it's adapting independently each wheel to make it the most soft, smooth, comfortable ride based upon driving conditions, road conditions, and just a bunch of other factors. It's going on all behind the scenes and I've, I've explained that in other reviews where I'm driving AMGs, but I'm really glad to see them carry that over into this EV EQE uh, electric variant. And also we got speed-based lowering, so the faster you're going, it'll kind of uh, lower for reduced drag and increased stability. We've also got rear wheel steering. The rear wheels will turn 3.6 degrees, which makes for better handling, better practicality, especially when you're in tight parking scenarios. It's a heavy vehicle. This is 5,534 pounds, which is about 360 more than that of the base EQE. I think this is a great car for those people that are, you know, kind of hesitant to dip their toe into the EV game. With this AMG performance that it's got, it's got all, all things AMG, but it's just in an electric vehicle. This is a great way, again, to kind of ease into it if that's what you're familiar with. If you like that power, you like the speed, you like the handling performance, all of that, it's a nice way to do it. And this is so luxurious on the inside. Again, this is a Mercedes Benz. It brings that prestige, it brings that luxury. It's just an absolutely gorgeous car inside and out. And again, it's it's unique. Sometimes I forget that I'm an electric vehicle until I you know switch the sound off and it's basically just like purring along. So. That is one nice thing, and I think that's gonna be uh, big for the success of, of Mercedes launching this EV across all their all their different platforms. It's just that people know and love that, and if they wanna ease in and just keep that continuity of brand, this is a great option to do it. I will say, not a lot of people gave it much attention. I think it's, it's probably so new that uh, people didn't really pay much attention to it. You know, For $111,000 in this bright blue color, you might think that people notice it, they didn't and it was kind of surprising um but then again 
I'm not really freaking out every time I see a Tesla or something and then you know Rivians are pretty cool but to see them out on the road maybe people just don't get too hyped up over EVs but nevertheless I've had fun driving it it truly is brain melting fast and yeah I honestly kind of have a headache from it uh if you're <laughs> prone to any motion sickness at all or just yeah it it uh makes my head hurt and I've you know probably launched it 15 times over the course of the past week and I seem to always get a headache so it's it's like addicting it's like a moth to a, a light you just want to do it and it's so fun and it's like a little video game every time you do a race start so I've enjoyed doing that quite a bit as well as just you know regular street pulls you know just doing it off the light just uh just mashing the accelerator down or doing it from you know 30 40 mile an hour just that instant torque is really really cool and also all-wheel drive just makes you feel super safe it's not like you're in a rear-wheel drive sports car where when you floor it you're gonna spin out and wreck now you can turn traction control off and you can definitely drift this thing uh, not saying I did but uh, you could if you wanted to and uh, it's really fun um, but it's heavy right like I said it's a heavy car so moving that much mass slide across asphalt uh, not the most nimble, but uh, fun nevertheless. All right, so we are in Sport Plus mode. I'm gonna turn the sound all the way up. I'm gonna put in Sport Suspension Plus and then the AMG Dynamics turned on. Let's do a little acceleration here. Wow. I mean, that pinned me back in my seat. My head hit the headrest and I just love how smooth and linear it is. Again, I, like I said, that torque curve has been raised up and that power continues on. So that was a 20 mile an hour pull. If I'm at 40, I get that same instant torque. And I love the little graphics that are going on that you saw earlier on this infotainment system. It's just so fun. But yeah, after two pulls like that, I'm already like, oh, starting to get a little bit of a headache because it just, I mean, I think it's just so much G-force pulling you back. Uh, it's fantastic. So I, uh, let's go ahead and show you guys a race start. So basically you'll put it in Sport Plus, you'll make sure AMG Dynamics is turned on. I'm gonna put my foot on the brake, then I'll mash the gas and then release the brake. It's gonna tighten up my seatbelt. It's gonna make a really cool little like spaceship-like noise. And then yeah, we will launch into another universe here. Let's go ahead and knock it out. Three, two, one. <laughs> wow, and thank goodness we got those AMG brakes because I'm hard on the brakes because basically, yeah, that thing is uh, so fast and you gotta be ready to stop at any speed. Let me do one more launch here. Foot on the brake. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is insane. I, yeah. That's mind boggling. I hope you guys enjoyed this video review. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to reply back. But I'm curious to hear you guys' thoughts. Do you guys like the EQE? Do you like where you know car manufacturers are headed with the electric vehicle movement? Uh, let me know what you think, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next one.